Big Face is a preeminent shaman and trial leader who first puts Abe on the path to his destiny as the chosen one and saviour of the Mudokan race. It isn't known exactly how powerful Big Face is, but he's probably the most powerful Mudokan that's been seen in the entire series. Perhaps only apart from Abe after he gains the strength of Shrikol, which was given to him by Big Face. Big Face is shown possessing many abilities including levitation, being able to give visions and teleportation, although that last one is apparently relatively standard for the Mudokans. He also has the ability to produce lightning from his hands, which is probably why he wears a massive mask in order to hide his eyes, which would naturally reveal that he's actually a Dark Lord of the Sith. In reality, it's not really specifically said why Big Face wears his mask, but it's known that it was carved out of wood by native Mudokans and probably has some symbolism. There's suggestions that at least the design is incredibly old, and it likely has some ancient representation to it that isn't yet known. Concept art shows alternative designs for it, including a few displaying not-so-big faces that appear to be inspired quite prominently by insects, displaying many eyes, or two very fly-like eyes for example. I also really love this one that makes him look really creepy, like some kind of bug god, it looks like he's literally just got a giant beetle on his face. This piece makes him feel really intimidating and powerful to me for some reason. Then there's other art displaying essentially alternative designs of the final mask that we got, such as this one which included tusks or whatever you want to call those things, before it was simplified down to the final version. However, ALF has actually given multiple varying reasons as to why Big Face wears his mask, including in order to hide his massive buck teeth. Although he has also claimed it's because of essentially rather the opposite reason, saying it's because Big Face is actually one of the most handsome Mudokans ever, and he hides his face in order to avoid all the attention that he would naturally draw to himself. As always, Alf is a joker and everything he says should be taken with a pinch of salt. Or whatever the odd world equivalent of salt is. The big face is notable for being one of the only Mudokans other than Abe that's blue. Something that seems to be indicative of important Mudokans. The leaders, you know, those people that are guarding the Munzaic lines and all that kind of thing. Except for all these ones working in a factory that appear in the opening cutscene for some reason. In universe, I think this highlights the connection between and the importance of both Abe and Big Face. It's interesting to note that Abe is supposedly blue in order to represent the sadness for the subjugation of the Mudokan race. Considering they both play vital roles in attempting to free their kind, it makes sense that both of them would be blue for this same reason. Out of the universe, presumably Big Face is literally just Abe's character model, reused with a mask to cover the face in order to hide this fact, as well as a couple of other minor changes, so that Oddworld inhabitants could save on disk space, that's just what I've always assumed anyway. There's a theory, and I don't know how prominent this theory was, it felt pretty prominent to me at the time, but I remember years ago hearing a theory that because they're both blue, Big Face is Abe from the future. Now to be fair, there's arguments to be made in support of this theory, such as the fact Big Face seems to know exactly to be at the right place at the right time, coming out of nowhere to find and revive Abe after he falls from a cliff. Plus they both look very similar and Big Face hides behind a mask and is in general a very mysterious figure. Plus he hasn't actually been given a proper name in the games. To further back up his theory, while probably most concept art where his mouth is revealed shows him as just having a normal Mudokan mouth, there is at least this piece here in which his mask kinda resembles a Sligs Heads Up display visor if you ask me, where his mouth is seen stitched like Abe's. Although I recognise the Mudokan figure and his concept art as being a sketch for Abe, although I could be wrong. It just seems to match Abraham Lur concept art very closely, so potentially they were just using it as a reference by adding a mask to it. However, I think proof that Big Face isn't Abe is in the fact that they specifically made the effort in Oddworld New and Tasty to make him so distinct and different from Abe. Shown him as having skin painted red from the looks of it and having native, I guess, shaman markings on his body. Interestingly, there is this picture which appears to be a variant Big Face look. I thought this was of the New and Tasty Big Face, but when I compared them, although they're very similar designs, they are different. And I had a look, and this one actually predates New and Tasty's release date by at least two years. The earliest version I found was from 2012, I think. And I'm not sure where it comes from, as Big Face never appears like this in any of the games, as far as I know. 
In this version, he has very similar, although different, native markings on his body. And his skin is a bright green, although judging by how vibrant this green is, I'd guess that that's body paint as well. Considering the use of red paint in this image, as well as the fact his loincloth is a red colour, much like it is in New and Tasty, my guess is that this is like an early released shot of Big Face from New and Tasty while it was being made, but again, I have no idea, I'm just guessing. Plus, another factor that suggests Big Face is not Abe from the future is that he doesn't have Abe's scars. Even in Oddworld Abe's Odyssey though, they did make great effort to differentiate him from Abe other than just having him wear a mask. His ponytail seems to be a dark brown to me as opposed to Abe's orange and purple, and plus Big Face's loincloth is a yellowy beige colour. Except for some reason in the Japanese version, Abe Gogo, or I don't know, in Japan, I guess they pronounce it Abe Gogo or something like that. In this version, for an, as far as I know, inexplicable reason, his loincloth is recoloured in certain scenes to match Abe's. In addition to this, in published media images, Big Face wears these brown bands. Although for some reason, he's only seen wearing these in the actual game once, in his first scene. Except apparently in some versions, for some reason. Speaking of which, Big Face's first scene is just after Abe first sees the moon, which has the Mudokan paw print on it. Which I have no idea how this is the first time he notices this. It's literally right there next to him eight screens ago. That's the trouble with 2D games, the characters are always looking forwards, never sideways. Abe falls off the cliff, smashes his head, dies, and Big Face emerges from the mist and uses his powers to revive Abe and send him to face the trials of Paramonia and Scrabania to prove himself worthy, where he is rewarded with a scar on each hand combined to grant him the power of the Shrike the fact that Big Face seemingly appears immediately after Abe dies and revives him is probably a display of his powers of foresight. He knows a lot about the future, and it's highly likely he knows Abe's entire destiny, the path he will go down, and yet he doesn't tell him about it. It's this that indicates perhaps a darker side to Big Face. He doesn't let Abe in on what's going on and primarily uses him as a tool by guiding him to conduct the change the Mudokan race needs. And this is perhaps for Abe's benefit, after all he is a very reluctant hero, at least at first. And just how Munch initially refuses to go back to Viker's labs to save his species when the almighty Raisin completely laid out his future goals, Big Face didn't bother with any of that, with Abe, and just guided him unwittingly to become the saviour the Mudokans needed. It's during this first scene that this shaman is given the nickname Big Face, when Abe, seeing his very long mask, describes him as such. Which I always thought was very rude, you know, he meets someone for the first time, first thing he does is call him Big Face. And this is the guy who just brought him back from the dead. Good thing he has a sense of humour. I've often wondered if, well, I mean, obviously it's a game, so when you die you come back to life, otherwise it'd be an incredibly difficult game to play. But considering Big Face literally revives Abe in the actual game's story, I've always wondered if it's Big Face who keeps bringing him back to life when you die as him during the game, or if those birds and whatever clearly indicating something is happening. The fact that the ancient temples of Paramonia and Scrabania are adorned with sculptures of Big Face's mask indicates to me that it's potentially something that's been passed down for generations, unless Big Face himself just made them in his spare time, or just lives for a really long time. If it is passed down, I've seen people speculate, I guess a bit like the time travel theory, that Abe may one day become the new Big Face. These sculptures also indicate Big Face's role as the leader of the trials, and I suppose as the guardian of the Shrike Hole power. Perhaps there might be similarities to how in the Church of England religion, unless I'm mistaken, the Queen is like the earthly representative of God. Perhaps that's the sort of relationship Big Face has with the Shrike Hole demigod, waiting for the right person to come along, someone who's worthy enough to complete the trials of their ancestors and bestow its power onto. I find it really interesting that Abe specifically is the chosen one, and sometimes I wonder why that is. Why did Big Face have to wait for Abe to come along and complete the trials and be the one to embody Shrike and destroy Rupture Farms? My personal theory is that one factor, probably among many, is that Abe was born in the industrial society. 
You see, it should be noted that actually the native Mudokans, the ones born with their freedom intact, don't exactly like the Mudokans that are born into slavery without liberty. The natives reject these industrialised Mudokans for not being worthy, for living in a life of subservitude, and see them as being completely different and a disgrace to the Mudokan race as a result of this, even though it isn't their fault. It's the industrialists that started the segregation of the Mudokans, but it's the ignorance and arrogant attitude of the natives that keeps it in force. For example, this is somewhat shown by the way the natives initially and very often threaten to kill Abe with slingshots when he tries to enter Munsei climbs. Which, of course, is understandable that they wouldn't be trusting of strangers, but I do feel that often in the Oddworld games the natives are inherently shown as being good and being simply victims of the industrialists' power, but it isn't as cut and dry as that. The natives are somewhat arrogant and are in part responsible for a lot of the problems that Mudokans face. While I don't have any particular idea as to why Abe individually specifically is the Chosen One, just for religious reasons I guess, I do think that the Chosen Mudokun, the one to take the power of the Shrike and work to free the Mudokun race, had to be a member of their kind that was born into the industrialised world because they are the only kind that would be able to wield the power with great empathy for those in captivity and truly be able to unite the native world and its inhabitants with the industrialised Mudokans. This is why it couldn't have been just any native Mudokan that was granted the Shrike power from Big Face. If the natives were given this great ability, they'd probably use it to fight back against the industrialists, but of no concern of their own brethren enslaved, whom they just see as the enemy, as part of the industrialised forces, serving them and taking part in the slaughter of the natural world. And that's where I think the importance and uniqueness of Big Face comes in, as shown in particular in the bad ending, where he's seen attempting to convince his fellow sacred natives to save Abe. He seems to be incredibly sympathetic to the industrialised Mudokans and wants their liberation and he uses Abe as a tool in order to do that. Back to the question as to why it had to be Abe specifically, potentially Big Face was simply waiting for any industrialised Mudokan to escape and it just happened to be Abe. Though that's a rather undramatic and unromantic idea, and considering Abe is blue too, I'm guessing it's just, you know, destiny. Spiritual reasons and whatnot, that's just what destiny has in store for Abe. Although perhaps also symbolically, it was important that it was Abe because he was not only just a subservient Mudokan, but he was essentially fully supportive of the industrialists in some ways. Thinking he had a good job, was being treated well, happily working late and being the employee of the month. He wasn't just another slave, he was a really good worker. So the fact that Big Face could turn this probably the most highly acclaimed Mudokun in the factory into being a weapon against the Magog cartel is further proof to the natives that the slaves are just misguided, need to have their minds opened and can be turned around. Perhaps it's also this work ethic that's why Abe ended up as the Chosen One. Even if any other Mudokan had managed to escape and been found by Big Face, they likely would have been far too lazy to do the work and succeed in the trials they needed to. They would have been proof to the native Mudokans that their industrialised brothers are a lesser unworthy species. I think that there must have been quite a bit of tension or conflict between Big Face and the native Mudokans. I imagine the natives see Big Face as a do-gooder, an optimist and an appeaser to some degree. And he can't unite the Mudokan people without their support. That's why he can't just give Abe the power. He instead gets him to go through the trials, to prove his worth to his native brothers, and to prove that he has what it takes to be the chosen one and unify their people. Ultimately, the whole game is essentially just Big Face's master plan to unite the Mudokan race. And he's the only one that actually has this as their initial goal. The native Mudokans didn't want it, they don't like the industrialised Mudokans. The enslaved Mudokans don't even know that it's possible because they don't know of any life outside of their enslavement. And Abe didn't want it, he just wanted to escape and not get turned into a lollipop. This whole thing of, you know, freeing the Mudokan race and uniting their people was Big Face's idea. Big Face is a healer and he uses Abe as a conduit with which to heal the Mudokans on a massive scale. And as a result, I'd argue it can't be underestimated enough how important Big Face is. He's the catalyst of Abe's journey, even in the new Oddworld canon thanks to New and Tasty. 
In many ways, he's like the Qui-Gon Jinn of Oddworld, being a well-respected and high-ranking member of their society, yet choose to oppose general consensus and go against the wishes of their respective societies by setting the Chosen One on their path to fulfil their destinies. It's clear that Big Face holds a high place within the native culture and society. However, as shown in the endings of Abe's Odyssey, he needs the support of his fellow natives in order to fulfil his goals. However powerful Big Face may be, he's clearly not all powerful, requiring sacred Mudokans to perform moves such as their attack on Rupture Farms in the good ending of Abe's Odyssey. It's interesting to note that concept arts originally had Big Face utilising a lightning stone to give Abe his scars as opposed to it coming from him directly, indicating that his power may not necessarily come entirely from within him, at least in this version, where he uses objects to perform some abilities. Not to mention he carries some kind of staff, which who knows what he uses that for. In the good ending, where Abe has proved his worth and his good intention by freeing the enslaved Mudokans, or a decent chunk of them anyway, ten sacred Mudokans enter a place known as the Mosaic Hidden, where they take part in a chance circle which obliterates Rupture Farms and Moloch the Glucken, allowing Big Face to teleport in and rescue Abe, taking him back to the Mosaic Sanctum, where he is greeted with a hero's welcome. It is this moment where Abe, thanks to Big Face, has been able to begin the process of uniting the Mudokan race and open up the minds of the native Mudokans and allow them to accept and welcome their formerly enslaved brothers into their natural culture. From here, Big Face has served his purpose. He's found and guided the one who successfully took on his trials, proved himself to the native Mudokans and freed the slaves. Abe is set on his path to save and unite their people and as a result, Big Face doesn't appear anymore, aside from a few seconds at the beginning of Abe's exodus, where he accidentally pushes Abe off the podium at his hero's welcome, giving him a concussion which allows him to get a vision from the three weirdos which sets in motion the plot of Abe's exodus. So even then, Big Face is the guy who starts that path, whether intentionally or unintentionally that time. Considering Big Face's ability to give visions and his tendency of foresight, I sometimes wonder whether he purposely pushed Abe off in order to summon the three weirdos and allow them to appear to Abe, maybe as a way to say, you're not done yet. Although in the cutscene, it does seem like Big Face did just do it accidentally. Also, I've always thought Big Face sounded Japanese in Abe's Exodus, and looking back, his voice does seem to have changed quite a bit from Abe's Odyssey. But Abe, he's one of us. But what do you think? <laughs> I've just realised that maybe they used the Japanese version of Big Face for that opening clip, considering he does have the brown loincloth in that scene after all. I used to think Big Face doesn't speak at all, but yeah, he does, it just not a lot. Much like literally every character in Abe's Odyssey that isn't Abe. It's a shame that Big Face essentially disappears after this scene and is never even mentioned again, considering the vital role he plays within the Oddworld universe. Which, by the way, I have seen that some people think the Shaman at the beginning of Oddworld Soulstorm is him, but it isn't. That's just a generic Shaman as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I read somewhere specifically that that is not Big Face. He was, however, going to be a character in the unreleased real-time strategy game Hand of Odd, where his gameplay attribute would have been the power to teleport himself and other units in the game. As that wasn't made, unfortunately, his final appearance remains in Abe's Exodus. About a year and a quarter ago, I was playing around with Munch's Odyssey and was trying to mod Big Face into the game essentially by giving the Shaman his mask. I didn't get that far. I probably could have done, I just stopped for whatever reason. But I did end up giving Abe a rough outline of like a Big Face mask just to see if I could do it. So that's just something pretty funny to see, I guess. Speaking of the Munch's Odyssey Shaman, there seems to have been a trend set for each Oddworld game to have their own different guide, or guides in each one. Exodus having the three weirdos, Munch's Odyssey having the Shaman as well as the Almighty Raisin, but of course it is Big Face in Abe's Odyssey that started it all. While I don't think Big Face will likely appear in any major future Oddworld games, potentially if they eventually make games like Hand of Ford, maybe we have a place in that, but I do think it's amazing to think of just how important a character Big Face is, being a guy that essentially starts the entire Oddworld story in many ways. 
The first however long of Abe's Odyssey is literally just Abe escaping from Rupture Farms and that's it. It's only when Big Face comes along as the catalyst of what ends up being the main drive of the Oddworld games that the story truly takes form. The more I read into and speculate about it, the more it surprises me that despite practically vanishing from existence after the first game, there is so much importance within the character of Big Face.